Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. In this video, I'd like to discuss about another topic that I think is really, really important. And that is, are all cases of ILD, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? This has been a question that has come up on the channel and it's something that comes up in the clinic all the time. Now, I'm not your doctor. It's really important to always go and talk to your own healthcare providers to see what's the situation in your case. The field of interstitial lung diseases this, you know, umbrella term that covers a lot, a lot of conditions means that there is a lot of nuance. Not every patient is the same. Not the, all prognoses are the same for the different conditions. But long story short, interstitial lung diseases are conditions which affect the tissue of the lung. They lead generally to either inflammation of the tissue, the spongy tissue of the lung, or hardening of that tissue, and we call that fibrosis or scarring. So we can have conditions which lead to pulmonary fibrosis or lung scarring. Now, lung scarring can be triggered by many things. And idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, just refers to the condition in which we have scarring of the lungs, so lung scarring, pulmonary fibrosis, and idiopathic just means that we don't have a known cause or we cannot find the right cause for it. We've looked, we've done some tests, and we really can't say why the fibrosis is there. And that situation is called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But it is, that is just one diagnosis, one entity. So if there is a pattern on the CT scan of scarring that is compatible with, compatible with this diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, we cannot find another explanation for that. We've done some tests. We call that IPF. But there are other cases in which we may have pulmonary fibrosis or scarring of the lungs in which there is a known cause. Or there may be certain patterns which we have to call something else, such as non-specific interstitial pneumonia or NSIP. That can also be idiopathic. We don't have a known cause for it, but the pattern doesn't look like IPF. So this is where it becomes a little bit tricky because within the field of ILD, there are a lot of acronyms. There are a lot of descriptions of what we see on the CT scan, on pathology specimens or biopsies of the lung. And these generally tend to overlap to some extent, leading to a confusion in terms of diagnosis. So not all ILD is IPF. This is what I want to underline from the beginning. At the same time, there may be conditions in which we have a known cause. So let's think about that for a while. In some instances, we may have an occupational exposure, such as exposure to asbestos. This can lead to a pattern which can look like IPF, but it is actually not. It's something else. It's triggered by the inhaling asbestos fibers. Or we may have a connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease. It's a mouthful, but it just means that there is a systemic condition, a condition that affects several organs of the body, including the lungs. So it may be a condition such as uh, the case in which the joints are affected by inflammation. There is an inflammatory condition such as rheumatoid arthritis, and it may lead to that affecting the lungs. Or it may be something called systemic sclerosis, associated interstitial lung disease, in which we have a condition that affects the skin generally, leads to skin tightening, we call this systemic sclerosis, and it can also harden the lungs. So there can be a lot of situations in which a condition which affects seemingly distant organs from the lungs may also trigger lung problems and pulmonary fibrosis. So this is one thing. We may also have um, other environmental triggers. Certain people may be predisposed to being very sensitive to certain things that they inhale. And generally we think about organic dusts that we inhale, particles from moldy hay, people who work on farms, people who keep birds. They can sometimes develop something called hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which I've touched upon in other videos. Basically hypersensitivity pneumonitis is an exaggerated immunological reaction in the lungs to something that we've inhaled. And that can be literally anything. It's a fascinating condition. And it can also lead to pulmonary fibrosis, but it's treated differently because we treat that condition by eliminating the cause, the trigger from the environment, and potentially with anti-inflammatory agents in the first instance. And only if the scarring is really getting worse, then we consider anti-fibrotic or anti-scarring medication to slow that process down and stabilize the condition. 
So there can be, as you can see, a lot of situations within ILD where we have pulmonary fibrosis, but it's not idiopathic. We have a known cause. So not all ILD is IPF. And that's what I wanted to just illustrate in this video. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to make more videos on these topics. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.